I don't think uh, performing for a straight or gay audience really worries me. Um, unless my parents are there, then they'll be heckling me. Get off the stage, you big fag. No. Um, I honestly, once in a while I'll be a little nervous. It depends. But usually I don't, it, it doesn't bother me because I've worked a lot of straight clubs. And, you know, I may change the order of jokes, but it's more how the audience, the energy of the audience is going. I have to tell you, I do come, I'm from Buffalo, New York. I come from a very conservative family, and it wasn't easy telling my parents that I'm gay. In fact, I made my carefully worded announcement at Thanksgiving. <laughs> I said, Mom, would you please pass the gravy to a homosexual? <laughs> she passed it to my father. A terrible scene followed. <laughs> then my mother says to me, Bob, you're gay? Are you seeing a psychiatrist? I said, no, I'm seeing a lieutenant in the Navy. <laughs> Australians abbreviate more words than any other English-speaking people. You don't say good day, you say good day. You don't say football, you say footy. You don't say French President Jacques Chirac, you say that dickhead. I don't blame you, I think he's an asshole. You know what? You know why? Because he claims that the radiation isn't going to leak out of that coral reef because of superior French technology. Today I used some French technology, a big pen that leaked all over my pocket. They can't even make a champagne bottle that doesn't explode. Yep. And it covers everything from uh, 
the real stuff like dating and you know how you felt in high school or elementary school and to the silly stuff we do a parody of Dr. Seuss called What I Saw on Christopher Street and um, mm the first time I saw a Hercules movie. I, yes. Yes. And you know what I think is great now? Little boys play with those action figures with the big, big muscles. It's got to be great for little gay kids. Imagine a concerned mother finds her son playing with the Barbie doll. So in a panic, she runs out and buys him a Masters of the Universe doll. Bobby, I want you to play with blonde, rippling, muscular He-Man. <laughs> Not with Barbie. Mommy, that's the best idea you've ever had. <laughs> My parents once said to me, Bob, we never suspected you were gay. Get real, they once bought me a chemistry set. I used it to make my own line of skincare products. <laughs> I was definitely a gay kid. My treehouse had a breakfast nook. <laughs> My first words were, oh, mother, really? <laughs> and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this. When I was growing up, my all-time favorite toy was my sister's Kenner's Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> Do any of you remember this? Of course the gay guys remember this. If you don't remember the Kenner's Easy Bake Oven, this cooked tiny cakes and pizzas with the heat from two light bulbs. This really prepares you for adult life. The first time I had a dinner party, I tried to cook a roast with a flashlight. Now don't get me wrong, I was a typical boy. I liked dinosaurs, snakes, and frogs, but somehow my perspective was different. It worried my parents. They took away my train set because I liked to pretend to be from the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> they were in denial. I wasn't afraid of the dark. I was afraid of unflattering light. <laughs> and I was in the Boy Scouts, and did you know the Boy Scouts of America are a homophobic organization? They don't, yes. I loved being a Boy Scout, I can't believe it. You know, their motto is be prepared and nobody's more prepared than a gay scout. My survival kit had a spice rack. My Swiss Army knife had a melon baller and garlic press. I was ready for anything. Now you think I'm exaggerating about being a gay kid? I'm not really, because I have proof. I was home recently, and my mother, who saved everything, gave me a lot of stuff. Now she gave me this picture of myself when I was eight years old. I could tie a bow tie before I could tie my shoes. And this was really amazing. She saved all of my report cards with the teacher comments on them, and I thought I'd share them with you because I think the teacher comments are revealing. Now, the first thing you gotta know about my mother, she's so organized, she stacks regular potato chips in Pringles cans. <laughs> my mother's great. My parents are retired now. She doesn't care what people think. She has a bumper sticker now on her car that goes, honk, if your husband's watching TV and your oldest son doesn't know what he's doing, the other two are in California, New York, the one's gay, your daughter is divorced, and you forgot to buy milk while at the store. <laughs> You've got to see my mother. My parents have a boat. Now, during the summer, every piece of clothing she wears has an anchor emblem. <laughs> There's an anchor on her visor, sunglasses, blouse, skirt, deck shoes, purse. One day she fell in and sank like a stone. 
Now, this is what Miss Chalmers wrote about me in the first grade. In the past several weeks, there has been quite a change in Bob's behavior. She makes it sound like I started doing heroin. <laughs> he talks constantly when he should be working. He doesn't obey our classroom rules as he did before. Every day, I have to remind him several times what he should be doing and should not be doing. Second grade, Miss Rockwood wrote, Bob sometimes forgets to give others a chance to work. I hope he will settle down and stop talking so much. <laughs> Third grade, Miss Hill wrote, Bob has, become Bob has become uncooperative and disruptive at times. This is not Bob's normal behavior. I'd appreciate any suggestions as to why this change in attitude. I was giving attitude in the third grade? <laughs> Then in the fourth grade, I had Mr. Gruby, the only male teacher at Theodore Roosevelt Elementary School. Now this is absolutely true. Every day after school, his boyfriend used to walk their golden retriever, pick him up after school. Look at this report card, green stars. <laughs> Even on the inside. Listen to these comments, a joy to have in class. <laughs> Dependable, efficient, of course he loved me, we were sisters. I mean, if Joan Rivers can do jokes about Edgar, you know, or Phyllis Dillard did jokes about Fang, I can do jokes about Tom, I feel. So, no, I think it's, that, to me, that, that was a really important part of you know, coming out as a comedian was to be able to talk about your life in a real way. He doesn't mind because you know, a lot, some of the jokes are based on truth, but um, you know, I, it's affectionately done, so I'm not, like, not being mean to him. And we moved in together about five years ago, and you know, right away, I knew Tom was a marvelous interior decorator, because back then, we lived in a studio apartment in Greenwich Village, and Tom, using mirrors, made it look like 12 rooms on Central Park West. <laughs> when the sun came in, our sofa went up in flames. <laughs> Please, we have track lighting in our refrigerator. I don't think any stand-up comics, I mean, if you think about it, not very few straight stand-up comics do bits about very graphic descriptions of heterosexual sex. It's just real, it's, it's a hard thing to do comedically because you're, you get too real and you take people out of the moment and stuff like that. But I do think you can talk about anything in stand-up comedy. <laughs> Coming out to your family does take a lot of guts because you don't know how your parents are going to react. And I have heard, like, every story. My friend Michael told his mother. The first thing she said was, I didn't spend $2,000 on an orthodontist. You can give blowjobs. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Imagine if she spent the money on a proctologist. <laughs> she got her money's worth. His teeth are straight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Australia is much more progressive than most of the U.S. in many ways. For instance, the Mardi Gras parade was carried on the ABC here. They would never carry a gay pride parade on a national network in the U.S. Um, I noticed in the Mardi Gras bulletin that, you know, the the Prime Minister of uh, New South Wales and I think even the Prime Minister of the country welcomed the guests. But the opposition leader, one of them, also welcomed, you know, visitors to Mardi Gras, which, you know, the Republicans would never do that in the U.S., so I think that's really cool. And, you know, your whole thing about how people can immigrate if you hit a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, who was from overseas, they could immigrate here, you know, in the same standing as heterosexual couples. And, and I was raised Roman Catholic, and according to the Catholic Church, it's okay to be homosexual as long as you don't practice homosexuality. Which is interesting because I think it's okay to be Catholic as long as you don't practice Catholicism. <laughs> I 
I don't see what the big deal is. One of the priests in our parish was gay, Father Mary Louise. <laughs> and he always tried to make you feel comfortable during confession. Then what happened? <laughs> You're kidding, stop. <laughs> Wait a minute, before you go on, I'm gonna get a drink, you want one? Well, then go in peace. Your sins, some of which are remarkable, <laughs> are forgiven. And for your penance, watch the Ten Commandments three times. <laughs> Wasn't Ann Baxter terrible? <laughs> oh, she was terrible. <laughs> I can't believe the Catholic Church is homophobic. You know, they don't give us credit for anything. Michelangelo designed the Vatican. And of course Michelangelo was gay, only a gay man would spend four years painting one room. <laughs> and we started the Renaissance. It was probably two gay men talking during a party. <gasps> Wouldn't it be fun to do religious paintings of hot, muscular, naked guys? <laughs> and sell them to churches? That would be a hoot. <laughs> you know, you know who scares me now are the right-wing fundamentalists? They're a nightmare. They think they know everything. They have them on the streets in New York. One of them shouted at me, are you ready for judgment day? I said, no, I have so much shopping to do. And they go on and on about Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, don't forget, those cities had the highest concentration of five-star restaurants in the Holy Land. Does that... Does that sound like I'm promoting homosexuality? I hate that phrase, promoting homosexuality. I never received any of the promotional literature. Homophobia is based on ignorance. It became perfectly clear to me last year when I heard an Air Force pilot say that he would rather quit the military than work with someone gay. My first thought was, what's an Air Force pilot gonna do then? Get a job with an airline? Because we all know there's no one gay in the travel industry. <laughs> I was home in Buffalo a couple weeks ago. We had a dysfunctional family reunion. You've all gone to those, right? Where everyone has to bring a casserole and an unresolved issue. It's a lot of fun. I brought my boyfriend, Tom, and Tuna Surprise. They were both big hits. And I saw my 89-year-old grandmother while I was there. Now, her entire life, she has always stereotyped every ethnic group, but she always thinks she's paying them a compliment. Your last name's Polish, isn't it? You people make the best sausage and meat products. <laughs> Look at Mr. Schiffmacher's lawn. You notice how he trims the edges? Nobody works harder than a German. Doc Dr. Tatelman is the smartest man I know. A Jew is always well-educated. I couldn't wait to introduce her to my friend Sharon. You're lesbian, you people make the best folk singers and professional golfers. <laughs> And I saw my Aunt Lorraine, she's my favorite relative. My friends love her. When she came to visit me in New York, when I picked her up at the airport, we had to take the George Washington Bridge because her hair wouldn't fit through the Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> and she's... She's always lighting up one cigarette after another. Chain smoker, true story. She once saved a man's life by giving him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Six months later, he was dead from emphysema. <laughs> I'm very close to my family. Now, I was visited my sister recently, and I took my niece to the zoo, and at one point she said to me, Uncle Bob, when are you gonna get married? And I said, Amanda, I'm gay. Do you know what that means? And she said, I think so. Are you a top or a bottom? She's growing up a little too fast. <laughs> and a lot of people now are upset about gay parents. In South Carolina, a state representative 
wants to ban gay men and lesbians from adopting children because he thinks gay households are the breeding grounds for future homosexuals. I'm only gonna explain this once. <laughs> Heterosexuals are the breeding grounds for future homosexuals. What I think is interesting is that gay culture is so international in the sense that, you know, the music and stuff, it, it's all over the world and it's not like anywhere is, you know, you're not hipper than we're hipper. You know how like people would assume, oh yeah, Australia, that's so out of the way and stuff like that. But everyone, it, it's as up to date here as, as, you know, all over the planet. It's not like anywhere is out of touch with all the And you're very Pacific and Asian oriented in a way that, like I, I read your papers here and I see stories on, you know, Fiji and New Guinea and Indonesia, you know, which are your neighbors. And, you know, in the U.S., they're like in the back pages of the paper, you know, or a tiny little story. And it's interesting. I think that you, I, I like the focus of where your country seems to be going is good. Americans I, definitely, I think, have a sort of their own provincial attitude in that we think the whole world should be coming to America. Let's face it, you know, our culture is like everything is about America. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I... So in your show, um, which is not a good thing, I'm not saying that's a good thing. <laughs> so in your show, are you going to try and touch on on some local? Um, Few things. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, like I did learn about the tall poppy syndrome, and I think in the gay community we definitely have the tall pansy syndrome. Also, you know, we we pick on the the one who sticks out. So maybe I'll mention that. Uh, we'll see. Australians, because you've seen so much of American TV and movies, you really understand our culture a lot better than we understand your culture, I think, you know. So I, it, it, it didn't seem, I can't think of anything that struck out, you know. I mean, people seem to get my jokes pretty clearly, so that was a good sign to me. And uh, certainly I find the people really funny and witty, you know, I mean, I meet all these gay people so that are great, so. I like, too, that it's gay and lesbian is mixed, you know, like, the, you know, that the Mardi Gras committee was men and women. Now, I have to get going, but before I do, I, I told you my mother saved everything. Well, I want to share with you a children's book she wrote and illustrated, that I wrote and illustrated in the sixth grade. It's a class project. We're supposed to read these stories to kids in kindergarten. She had it wrapped in saran wrap all these years. Now, you know what? I do think the idea, why aren't there more books for gay and lesbian kids? There could be a series, you know, the Nancy Boys and the Hardy Girls. <laughs> the Nancy Boys and the Secret of the Hidden Magazines. The Hardy Girls in the Strange Case of the Field Hockey Friendships. <laughs> and Dr. Seuss could have written a book for gay kids, you know, the cat in the pillbox hat, or <laughs> Horton hears a yoo-hoo. <laughs> well, this is my book, Ben the Big Bronto. When I reread it, I thought, this is so gay. Now this is the title page. It even has a copyright. Only a gay kid would put a copyright. <laughs> many, many years ago, in a jungle lived a dinosaur named Ben. He wasn't liked very much because of his size. Ben was big. even underlined. <laughs> ben was too big to play tag and too big to swim. He had nothing to do. One day, a little dinosaur came to him and said, Hi, my name is Tom. What's your name? <laughs> this is like the gay Jurassic Park. My name is Ben. Wanna be friends, Tom asked. Let's go for a walk, he replied. <laughs> Let's go for a walk, he replied. 
Don't you think at that point, don't you think at that point they would have had, sent me to the school psychologist? <laughs> so Ben had a new friend, Tom. Boy, it's hot today. <laughs> Do you want to go to the river, Ben? Tom asked. <laughs> winky, winky, winky. <laughs> All right, he replied. Then on the next page it has, Meanwhile, at home, Ben's and Tom's mothers were worried. <laughs> yeah, with good reason. <laughs> well, I don't have time to read you the whole thing, but... I know, I know, but I can tell you this. It has a very happy ending. In fact, it's a gay triumph. Ben and Tom move to New York and become successful models at the Museum of Natural History. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are you gossiping, Lester? <laughs> no, 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 that must.